So there's this funny observation about the English language, and it asks, why do we drive on parkways and park in driveways? And it made me wonder about this word park. Because in addition to having a car park or a parking lot in American English, we have office parks and we have dog parks and we have baseball parks and amusement parks. But we park cars and we don't park offices and we don't park dogs. We don't park baseballs or roller coasters. I don't know if it's just the way that the English language evolves, but we are really bad at the English language and even more so in tech. And I think a good example of this is the word observability. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. This episode is the third in a series covering the hierarchy of reliability. I have more coming soon, so if you want to be notified when I release those, just hit the subscribe button. But back to observability. Observability comes from the study of control theory. And Wikipedia defines it in this way. Observability is a measure of how well internal states of a system can be inferred from knowledge of its external outputs. Basically, this is saying that if we have a system that's a black box where we don't know the exact internal state, that high observability means that we can accurately infer what's going on inside by measuring external output. This is basically monitoring. For example, if I work in a siloed organization as an ops engineer, and my developers toss an application binary over the wall of confusion and tell me to run it, then I don't really have visibility into what's happening in that code. I can only monitor the outputs. How many errors does it produce? How many successful requests or executions occur? At least this is what observability should mean. Except that it doesn't. Because tech folks borrowed that word and made it mean something completely different. In tech, observability means the ability to see inside the system, to not have to infer, to not just gather metrics and aggregate data, but to actually follow the inputs through the system to their respective outputs. More accurately, observability in tech means distributed tracing, which allows your system to receive a request and track that work as it interacts with various functions, methods, and services that comprise your application. Traces generally consist of spans that represent those pieces of work. And in nearly all tracing systems, a span has four pieces of data. An ID, the ID of the parent span, the start time, and the end time. And often there's some additional metadata to help with searching and aggregation. But with these four main pieces of data, you can use the spans to reconstruct the exact execution of your system from input to output. For example, let's say we have a request come into an online store. We'll give this span an ID of one, since it's the first one. And the parent ID is null because it's our first span. The request came in at 8.30 p.m. and returned complete at 8.50 p.m. So a total duration of 20 minutes. During this, however, the store called the catalog service. So now we have a new span with an ID of two, and the parent ID is that first span, so the parent ID is one. This span started at 8.32 p.m. and returned at 8.40 p.m. for a duration of eight minutes. The catalog service in turn called the warehouse stock service to verify that each product was available. And for each of these calls, we'll have a new ID. The parent ID will be two, that previous span, and we'll note the start time and end time for each. We may have additional calls to services, such as a user authentication service and a currency service. Now we can see our entire request laid out. And if we have a problem, such as an increase in latency or an error, it makes it much easier to find exactly where that is. We don't need to infer it from the metrics that we've already gathered. Many tracing tools will not only create spans for services, but also for each function or method called within the code being executed. As you evaluate tracing tools, 
you'll want to know which languages and frameworks are supported so that you can get the most detailed tracing. The other important consideration is sampling. As you can imagine, if a service is receiving many requests and each request is generating dozens or more spans, this could lead to an increase in resource consumption by your application. And it also has ramifications for data transfer and storage. Sampling is often used to reduce these, but it does so at the cost of losing or ignoring data. While metrics and traditional monitoring help provide context and alert you to potential issues, I think it's clear that tracing or observability is particularly valuable in helping you pinpoint the exact source of issues. If you'd like to learn more about tracing, I've added some links below. And if you've got further questions about observability or monitoring, leave a comment, and I'll see you in the next video.